Okay, and welcome back. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, the massive extinction event continues to pick up steam. It's like a slow freight train headed downhill. More and more indications are that major, major issues are really undeniable anymore. We know about the ocean life. We do know also, thanks to Dana, about the large animals in British Columbia, mammals, elk, deer, moose. They're not where they're supposed to be. Uh, the government says, well, they just migrated away. No, it doesn't happen that way. I think this is maybe the biggest one uh, that nobody talks about except us here, and that's the issue of insects. Dana Dernford was the first one to present that on the program, and now we have further confirmation that at least in areas of Utah and Colorado, western Colorado, eastern Utah, there are virtually no bugs like there used to be. And if you heard the story with Brian Tweed, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Check your windshields. Think back, all of you, this summer. Are the insects all over my car like they usually are in summer, or are things diminishing? I think many of you are going to find out that they are, in fact, diminishing. Let's find out uh, who's there first. Uh, Dana, are you up there in B.C.? I am, Jeff. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. How are you doing? Good. A little bit of a heat wave. Oh, my God. It's the hottest in history in the Middle East. Of course, we know that. I'm not being facetious. But uh, we've got this heat dome over the, the uh, northern hemisphere. Everybody's uh, cooked. It's it's crazy. It's 105 down here in two days. Wow. And not, it's yeah. it's it's been I'm not 95. In that case. No, it's been uh, 90 and 95 uh, quite often since June the first. I'm I'm a wuss. I'm spoiled. I'm Canadian, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're supposed to be cool and green and right. snow and and glaciers and that's that's all changing. Yeah, that's all, all changing. Yeah, yeah. And Yoshi, where are you? Are you there, Yoshi? We may not have him yet. Okay, I guess we don't have him yet. If you're not there, in fact, I'm gonna let me email him real quick. Here's a story I wanted to touch on first. This is this is really. I mean, how long have we been talking about this, friends, on this program? Over five years now. So the Asahi Shimbun, it's a big newspaper, a news service in Japan, says. There's no end to the Fukushima crisis while melted fuel remains. So what, what is TEPCO talking about doing? Leaving the melted fuel below the destroyed plant and putting a concrete box over it. This is, this is insane. All they're doing is guaranteeing and protecting the ongoing irrevocable change from a vibrant, happy, socialized, cultural world of animal life to Extinction City. That's all they're doing. They're protecting the melted fuel by covering the whole damn thing in concrete. The story reads, A massive concrete structure encases the wrecked number 4 reactor at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, site of the catastrophic 1986 accident. Dubbed the sarcophagus, it was erected to contain the fuel that could not be extracted from the crippled reactor. But remember, it was still in the reactor. I never expected this word, sekan, S-E-K-K-A-N, sekan in Japanese, to crop up in connection with the 2011 Fukushima nuclear crisis. That's sarcophagus. So they've raised the word, local governments are talking, TEPCO's talking. If they build a box over it, it's not like Chernobyl at all, because the melted fuel is no longer in the reactors. There are no reactors. They blew up. And the melted fuel went underneath, straight down, right through the containment. Probably in the first two, three days, it got through, it breached containment, and was on its way. Nobody knows where it is now. How many hundreds of tons are missing, or is it thousands of tons? Hey, uh, we just got a breaking story coming out from Forbes, so I thought it might have been a hoax because Forbes is uh, pro-nuke creeps. But Pokemon Go... Yeah. Found, found in Fukushima, gamers asked to avoid toxic Japanese nuclear pan, plants. Now, Jeff, what's really startling about the story is the, they say even though five years has passed since an earthquake and tsunami caught, caused a catastrophic nuclear meltdown, nothing has been decided yet on how to extract the melted fuel or how to decommission 
just just listen to this one, Fukushima Daiichi number one and Daini number two power plants. And not only that, on the bottom of that first page, um, Yankee Stadium, uh, I wonder what down too far. Game developers also talk about number one and number two plants, which is Doiny. And so we haven't heard that before. What's going on here? Because we know there's 15 plants went in the cold shut, couldn't go in the cold shutdown, had what they call station blackout, which is a total loss of power, the worst thing that can happen. Correct. Now, now they're admitting yeah. the Doiny plant is destroyed. Okay, wow. now the, wow. f- that's 10 f- kilometers away. Fukushima Daiichi is the one. That's the one we're familiar with for right. all of you out there. It's got six reactors. Two of them were supposedly not destroyed like the four that we know. They were set off a little bit to the uh, southeast. I think. Anyway, they're on the same property, but they're set off a little bit from the others. Now they're saying that the other, the sister plant, Fukushima Daini, is also destroyed. Quote, quote that again for me. I want to. That was listen. eleven minutes ago. That that story came out. And okay. I hadn't seen any other references to it yet. Never, never this anything day. about Daini. Nothing. Pokemon Go found in Fukushima. Gamers asked to avoid toxic Japanese nuclear plant. And the very first paragraph, um, they have nothing has been decided yet on how to extract the melted nuclear fuel or how to decommission the crippled Fukushima Daiichi number one and Daini number two nuclear power plants. And so there you go. Now they're, now they're coming out and, and saying this other power plant is destroyed because that's, that's what the only thing you can take away with that because they don't know how to decommission one or two. Wow. And that's Forbes. Uh, Forbes that's that's amazing. Most- Forbes actually, in the beginning, I forget the name of the reporter, uh, for the first, oh, a year, uh, he was doing some pretty good work, but they so, obviously got leaned on, and that, that took care of that. Yeah. And then games developer NIA and TIC says the area around number one, this is in response to Pokemon, areas around number one and number two should be exclusion zones in the Pokemon Go. And so why did they say that? And so why is two of those stories linked together? And wow. And why did Forbes uh, admit yeah, that? Yeah. Now Forbes, wow. Can you send that to me? Please? I can, so, yeah. Uh, this is Yoshi, not... Yoshi, this is, huh? I'm not yet. We're trying to get him. Okay. We had him, and then when I called him up, he wasn't there. So I don't know. I called him up, not in a figurative sense. But I said, are you there? So we did have him. He is there somewhere. And we have a new phone number, and he's in Thailand right now, I think. But uh, we'll try and get him. This is a, this is another big story. What what's happening here, Dana? Though, just boggles my mind. When you when you have what is allegedly a free press, allegedly, uh, and they don't cover the extinction event, which is what Fukushima is an extinction event. You know, yes, sir, that the press is not free. You know. It's full of shills. It's a it's a fourth branch of government. It's the Ministry of Propaganda, Information, and Mass Mind Control. That's all it is. Yeah, and uh, Unsclear is a good example of that. They're all government appointed, uh, sanctioned uh-huh. players from uh-huh. different countries. Uh-huh. And they said about Chernobyl that Chernobyl gave everybody on the planet the equivalent of 21 days of extra natural background radiation. And that's quite a staggering statement, uh, ball face law on top of that. So wait, 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 wait. That's all. They said that that's all Chernobyl did was give everybody an extra 21 days of normal background radiation. Globally. Oh, come on. Globally. Hey, uh, you remember when they sent up that uh, satellite and plutonium was on it and detonated and they said everybody on the planet had plutonium in it because of that detonation for quite a that few years. Goes back, that cut. goes back a long time. Yeah. Right, that goes back 50 years or something. And so, All so those satellites are fueled by plutonium, most of them anyway, except for the solar panel ones. The deep space probes are, are plutonium. This is what they had said anyway. And I agree with what you're saying. But, uh, so then you got three melted reactors in Japan and the the volume, the inventories in each of these buildings, five reactors on the top of each building in the storage pools uh, and a reactor core in the reactor. This is really something else. And in the last two weeks, I've been out on the boat just sitting there. Uh, I got a, a spot picked out where I go out and I'm studying that one spot over and over and over and over and over. 
for insects and birds and stuff like that. And I haven't seen uh, all together probably four, um, one bird and, and four insects. I'll say. So, yeah. And so this is really, really bizarre because the trees are right up to the shoreline in perfect days uh, and listening for any sound. Yeah. No, we're in a lot of no trouble. No birds. No we're birds. Still, we're in a lot of trouble. Yeah. See, when that's you don't not, hear see, bird, when you don't hear birds, first of all, as you just said, it's that's not possible. There have to be birds there. Oh, but yeah, it's a gorgeous aren't. place. Unbelievable for yeah. birds. Yeah. This is a mass extinction event. It's rolling like a, an invisible tsunami from west to east. And now they emit the Donny, too, finally. And they say Donny was saved because they managed to run an extension cord into the park. Oh, yeah. It doesn't right. work that way. It was, <laughs> there was nowhere to plug it in. Anyway, if they could run an extension cord, so to speak. Oh, but that's my. Miles O'Brien from PBS says that one. And we got them faking being inside a uniform, and quite a few of them. Seven, yes. uh, seven different yes. quarters. Those, and, those photos in Unit 4 are faked. No. Most of them. A lot of them. Now we know why there's um, 30 million bags. For sure. 30 See, million black plastic bags of tons. varying intensities of radioactive waste. 30 million of these yeah. bags. And the plastic is being broken down. In a couple of years, it'll just be just holes. There won't be anything. At best, yeah. Yeah, at best. Yeah, it's not designed for anything. And those, just for those, transportation. Those metal storage tanks full of all that water they keep talking about processing have only a five-year maximum lifespan, and then they'll rust through because they're sitting on the ocean. And they're not going to process those, those uh, tanks full of water. They're going to dump them all. They have been dumping them all, I think, at night into the ocean. They're just going to dump. I was looking at the food imports, exports uh, for Japan, and uh, they're having a boomer year again. Exports or imports? I'm sorry, exports. And so fishery and forestry agriculture, uh, 21% from a year earlier to 745. So there, uh, what you're saying million. is that the the farmers in Japan are having bumper crops and they're having great Yields yeah. and the exports are up 20 plus percent. I'll just go through it for you. Exports to other parts of Asia, this is official. Uh, United States, Europe are particularly brisk. So, Europe and the United States were hit hard. And anybody that ate that stuff is really going to pay for it in the near future. That was, uh, and so in 2015, exports of agriculture, forestry, fisheries uh, surged 24%, 18%, 24%. And then the final tally was, so scallops, now scallops are, are magnifying the radiation 120,000 times or so, bio-magnifying it by, because they're filter feeders. So that's the worst thing. Green tea is another really bad one. They, that top 10 billion yen. That's a bad one. Uh, yeah, you green tea lovers, you better do your 50, research. 50%. Yeah, yeah uh, that's crazy. And so they're, they're, they're uh, going to increase it all the way up. Until oh, 2020, they're going to a big push. They've been sending peaches down to different countries. The, the worst place to be is um, Hong Kong because of the mo- they say because of the money values. Then they're using that to buy food product, but it's just a ploy to get rid of it because nobody wants it. And so they send it down to these places. Where, where are they sh- sending the majority of their, their Hong- agricultural yeah. exports? Hong Kong is the most, uh, with uh, 179 billion a year. United uh-huh. States is second with 107 billion. Really? Yen. So we're getting Japanese agriculture. 7 billion products. yen. Yeah. What are we Apples, getting? What do we look for? Green cheese, rice, and agriculture, forestry, and fisheries. Oh, products, my God. Uh, so We've got Japanese rice here. Whiskey is another one. Soft Ooh. drinks is another one. Sharply, a sharp increase in soft drinks. That trend is expected to continue. And so that was the Hillary Clinton pact. That she made with um, with Japan, right? Where yes, she said yes. Keep in mind food. that you do not have any. Uh, there's no law that says that your market has to tell you from the. They don't have to list country of origin of the produce they're selling. They yeah, do this not is have murder, to. What they're doing, yeah. Of course it and is. It takes so long to show up under uh, these plausible deniability. You got I, cancer in five years up. from some apples you ate or whatever, or yeah. rice you've been eating. Just the green tea you've been drinking. Just one apple from yeah. these places is is a big risk. It's a huge risk. A scallop is stupid. Eating scallop from there is idiotic. You got to be stupid. 
Well, we know we can go, we can go back to the seafood. What about the story about the bivalves uh, and cancer right. floating? Infectious right. cancer organisms are now floating all over the Pacific. They've been found in the Atlantic on both sides of the Atlantic. Different, different shellfish, yeah, not just mussels. And they're affecting shellfish. But these are these are malignancy causing cells floating. They're infectious in the water, and Contagious. any form of sea lights. And so any sea life, folks. totally yeah. contagious. And who's going to tell me that they're only going to stay in clams? Come on. No, I mean, and they like to say uh, snails and everything else are in that same category. Sea urchins and starfish are in that exact same, are susceptible to anything the other ones are. That may and well be what wiped out all the starfish. So when all the starfish wiped out, because they eat mussels, you would expect the mussels to just go crazy on and the And they didn't tell us anything about it. Incredible. That didn't happen. They disappeared. All the documentation from yeah. the, the expedition showed that. Yeah. And and so here they are. I was thinking about it this morning, and I went looking for the export. And I was like, I don't know why, but it just struck me. I better go look for that. Better gather that up because there's something going on there I need to know. And I was reading it, and I was like, oh, my goodness. These people are out of control. Not only that, now we know the dining. So there's toys. Everything, Tokyo and everything north of Tokyo, for sure you want to avoid anything. And Tokyo and south of Tokyo, everything you want to avoid that too. And, but everything in the power plant side, which is north of Tokyo, and Tokyo is a million vehicles a square meter through that place of this, and there's a million vehicles of that, and there's a million vehicles of these. Uh, oh, one don't travel by itself. Uh, this is genocide. Like you said, it was 860 increased cancers in the cancer registry in Japan a year after. And not, you know, like thyroid was one, two, three in a million. Now it's 13,600 out of 40,000, not out of a million, but out of 40,000. So these are the most frightening numbers imaginable. These are the most crazy things imaginable. That, it, it, you know, you want to say that's a lie when you hear these things. Yes, Trust yes. Oh, you yeah. want to say that yeah. because that doesn't make sense. No. No, agree. that's not possible. Huh? Under, <laughs> Jeff, it's not possible on any models we got on this planet. But nuclear is the only thing that can destroy everything and anything. There's nothing that it can't destroy. There's nothing it can't contaminate. Okay, let me hypothetically lay this out. How are we supposed to survive when we have killed off the Pacific Ocean, when the food chain literally is missing multiple essential links which will never be forged and, and reinserted on that chain when animals are dying by masses, species, cross-species infection now with cancer, uh, how, are we, how are we supposed to deal with this? We're going to die, a lot of us. We, We're going to we die. There is no... We have to develop technology. We have... See, if we had a meteorite coming at us, we'd develop some pretty cool technology pretty darn quick. And... We would. You're right. Right, because we could see it, yeah. And we come up with pretty, it might not solve the problem, but I guarantee it'd be very cool stuff we would develop. We would show up around this planet to try to, you know, find a way forward. And that's what we need to happen here. And it can happen. We're not meant to survive this. This is on purpose. I doubt highly that uh, the, the ones that allowed us to, uh, to for, come to its fruition, because by building them there, that was asking for it. And then the repercussions for it was real, well understood in the 50s, 60s. But, you know, like I look at Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip and, and uh, Rockchild and Rockefeller and Queen Liz, or Queen Beatrice and people like this, you know, these, these uh, are in their 90s, the majority of them could drop dead at any given day. And they've right. worked their whole life at genocide. That's right. That's, yeah. That's right. As you know better than I do, probably by far. And the, but everything I looked at showed that these people are genocidal and they have no remorse and not even on their deathbed will these people have remorse. Not it, one uh, bit. Rupert Murdoch said he would make sure his uh, disgusting operation would survive till the end of time, even long at, you know, after he was gone. He had made sure that that machine that of hate that he created was never going to disappear. And guess what these people are like? Isn't that amazing? Someone would, would plan for a legacy like that? Yeah. To and bequest the upstage. planet with organized death and suppression and crushing of, of human rights. Uh -huh. I'm going to do all I can to finish you off while I'm gone. My goodness. You know, yeah, yeah. my goodness. And there's no one to hold accountable. No, how do we do it? Yeah. We got maybe well, we, like laws say, on we, the books, but how are you going to prosecute the laws? You're you a can't. superhero, Jeff. 
Yeah. Got to get a superhero. Well, it can't be from this planet. Yeah. You're going to come here and take on all these big shot. um, We need to have someone come here and give us an ultimatum. That's the only way I can see it honestly working. I've said it a hundred times. I don't see any other way. They need to come over to Canada and insult one of the women here, and they'll get sorted out right on the spot. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I'm saying? They need to come into the real world, and they get dealt with. It's well, all. It's all just. Uh, there's a lot of cultures out there are like that. They get rid of evil when you see it. It's been going on for many, many millenniums, you know. And that culture needs to exist again in one way. Mm-hmm. They're getting rid of everything good. That's not right. They are. They're perverting and corrupting everything good. There's a war on good. There's also a war on white people. We know that uh, being certainly. Uh, pursued by the white mainstream media. They're not doing anything to quash it. In fact, they're, they're fueling it. There's a war on European Americans. That's, that's clear. There's a war on goodness. That's clear. Uh, we are literally a planet now that has shifted over to a satanic base. That's clear. When they erected that, did you see the arch in Palmyra in Syria? There was that ancient arch, the Temple of Baal. B-A-A-L. That was the most evil temple, the most evil location in the world. And that temple had somehow basically survived. Well, ISIS blew it all to hell with explosives. But the the arch, the entry arch, did not fall down. ISIS don't blow up politicians, don't blow up mayors, don't blow up blah, blah, blah. Like in North America, they blow up mom, pa, kettle. It was sucking on it's a crazy. That's so what did they do? Anymore. They recreated this arch. And I have a suggestion that they may have been working on the arch itself for the last 49 years, making replicas, up to a thousand of them, that wow. they want to erect all around the world as a monument to evil, a monument Pretty to sure. satanic evil. They put the first one up in Trafalgar Square in April. They were supposed to put one up in Times Square, but the word got out and they had to postpone it. They wouldn't be able, they couldn't put it. These are 40 feet tall, these arch replicas. They're made of some kind of marble. Uh, it, it's, it's wild, the whole thing. And these would be markers all around the world that the planet has been dedicated to satanic evil. If, if they put them up, and we'll see. Hold on a minute, we'll be right back with Dana. Still trying to get Yoshi on the phone. Stay tuned. Yoshi in Thailand. We had him. We lost him. It, it could easily be that, uh, judging by the number of uh, interferences uh, in my normal way of doing business here in the last week, uh, they're blocking him. So hopefully, hang in there, Yoshi, if you're listening. We're trying to we're trying to give him a phone number to call us rather than we call him. It's expensive, but he will do it if he can. So in the meantime, we're talking with Dana about this. And I, again, go back to this issue of uh, an invisible tsunami of death. Uh, It's called an extinction event. It is clearly in North America. It has crossed the North Pacific. It's gone through the North Pacific. It has killed most of the sea life there. Virtually all of the sea life along the shore of British Columbia and moving down the West Coast, as we suggested it would. And now it's moving inland. If you notice, any of you, a, de- a significant decrease in songbirds, uh, birds in general, and insects. Let us know. Let Dana know. Let me know. Uh, and we'll, we'll track this. Because this is how we're going to do it. The government's not going to tell us. They know, as Dana knows, and as most of you know by now, the government knows exactly what's going on here. They monitor everything. The seawater at sea level at varying depths below, probably 50, 100, 200 meters. They monitor the atmosphere. They know what's going on, but we're not considered worthy enough to be informed about it. So 
Not the new ghost the new Ghostbusters was about Fukushima covering it up. How do you like that one? 2016. Was it and, really? Yeah. Well, and, tell me oh, more. Oh, yeah, man. I, I done a video on it. I wrote it all out, uh, all the way through the video. Just hang on. I still got some sitting right there. And I'll just give some highlights of that. But I, I made a video just to, to articulate it out there. They built uh, one of the things at 107 in that video of the Ghostbusters 2016. They draw ley lines. Um, right by the river. Uh, okay. And so this was about the ghosts and where the ghosts got their most energy and power and where they can create just millions of these ghosts will come out and wreck the whole planet. Yeah. Well, that's right where they build nuclear power plants. At one fifteen minute and two seconds in, they show a uh, reactor building with fuel rods coming out of the top of it, a simulation in a cartoon book like thing. And then they show... You mean like it blew up and the rods were sticking out of the top? That's right, yeah. Well, not necessarily blew up, but the rods were coming out of the top, but the building was shaped like the reactors. Uh, okay. The, the Mach 1 All right. uh, boiling water Mark reactor. Mach 1 BW, yeah. yeah. BWR. Don't sh- don't, so don't shoot the car. Go uh, that car is basically a nuclear reactor. They also, uh, at the beginning of it, smelling isotopes. She really? says, I smell isotopes. She First, she starts off, you say, I smell electrical discharge and isotopic uh, decay. And, and so, now if, that's if, you smell, did, if you were that you, close where you smell it heavily, like what they're suggesting, then you do it right Did you, did you, now I've, I've tasted it, I've felt it when I, right after the event in right. 311, I, I was exposed, uh, there were and two I believe different I times. was too, I smelled it. I mean, I could smell it, I could taste it. I could feel it. My sinuses, there were pains in there. It was bizarre. It was weird. Back in my throat. It wasn't normal. It was clearly tied to the radioactive. These are radionuclides. That's all they were. And right, and you shouldn't be able to smell it unless it's from a huge accident. I wouldn't right? say I could smell like sniff it and ah, I smell it. But I could. It was more of a, a taste, sense, feel kind of a thing. Yeah, and they went a little longer on it than they should have. And they, anyway, they got and then they all uh, well. There's another one where they're, they're going to test out this nuclear device. And she said, what? they didn't say it was a nuclear device right at that time, but it was pretty obvious after it becomes clear. But she said, why am I testing out this device? And she said, because you get the longest arm. And, and what that means is you're, you can hold the radiation away from you. But it turns out after, that's highly radioactive. Zirconian alloys, of, uh, talking about other stuff like this, cyclotron, which is... Another terminology uh, they use for, and that's for bringing out the 235 weaponized uranium. This is really nasty stuff from the 238 uranium, and and this is uh, all yeah, in, just, this is in Ghostbusters. She kissed, yeah. This, uh, 56 minutes in, she kissed the ghost container where the ghost is in this container and said it made her feel all warm and fuzzy inside. And the other girl says it's probably the radiation. Then they all left. Uh, because really? uh, no, this yeah. seems so it's to all based gotten... upon radiation up it, and the ghosts all green slime uh-huh. blobs which yeah, is yeah, typical yeah. of radiation depiction yeah and but anyway at one at, at another point in there they got the mayor calls them in and they start talking about how they got to cover it up people got you know like the whole speech was right there for Fukushima what you would like Tepco has I'm basically damn. said about Fukushima uh-huh. Got, uh-huh. how Tepco admitted they, they delayed the uh, level seven rating and how the whole government was in a panic and blah, 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 blah. And how they hid the doc. You know how they admitted a few weeks back, well, less than a month ago, they hid the melted reactors. I mean, they had 5,500 speedy charts in Japan. These are modelings from the releases and from readings. And uh, they hid that from the population who paid for it. And that was the idea of creating what sort of population didn't know what to do with the population. Huh. Uh, I was just reading another article today, before I forget, that they got a whole bunch of radiation shelters in those communities down there now for the local citizens. Think about that one. And so mm-hmm. it's just another remittance that how dangerous the radiation is. They, they built these mm-hmm. shelters in these communities, seven mm-hmm. and eight in each community, for the locals to go to if they couldn't. Uh, evacuate after an accident. Huh. I mean, they give potassium. Go ahead, Jeff. No, no, I'm just listening. Go ahead. So they, they go ahead and they give potassium forty out uh, up to fifty miles away. You know, 
because yeah. they recognize the radiation coming out fire, but the potassium is just this is an insurance mitigation or something, or to make them feel good, but because it doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything except for the thyroid. If, yeah, cesium if, goes right into the thyroid too, and um, and it doesn't guarantee you it won't displace the, the potassium that's in the thyroid. It's just a theory, and there's no proof that that actually uh, is the case. Where if 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 you were crossing the field and there was a plume coming through the field and you had taken that potassium iodine 24 hours or 48 hours beforehand, mm-hmm. it might have it might actually do its job. But if you live in an environment where you're constantly coming at you game over within a couple of days that got displaced not only that all that cesium uh, packs right in there too the gamma any type of gamma emitters will pack in there into your thyroid into your uh, adrenaline glands and your penile glands and stuff like that it'll go in all those glands not just your thyroid see Hmm. it's attracted to them all Mm -hmm. the thyroid is the one they can protect and it, it yeah it's if like, it gets in California there quickly enough somewhat. to keep ahead, the radioactive iodine from getting in there, but you mentioned cesium goes into the thyroid as well. How can, can how can sure. how can the potassium keep cesium out? Well, yeah, I can't. And not only that, uh, if it, the iodine didn't go in your thyroid, it just questioned one of your other organs. Right? Yeah, what's but the, I, what the I mean, you're talking good. about one of uh, many many organs in the body that are all open and susceptible to this. And you got one organ that if you get the stuff in early enough, it might block some of the uh, uptake. That was the game. That was the lie. That's the big fable. That was the trick. And so they always associate it. But don't worry, it only lasts eight days. And then you find out in the studies that uh, uh, thyroid injuries from just iodine, if it was just iodine, and that's all they give the animals was only iodine, turned out the cancer risk was their entire life. And, And so this was more about for medical procedures. This is what this was really about. Hmm. And that's why they always talk about background radiation. That's why UNSCLEAR, one of the biggest organizations on the planet, being quoted constantly in re- relationships to Fukushima or any other accident. Here they are claiming that anybody who got radiation around the world from Chernobyl, breathed it in a hot particle, got the same as uh, background radiation for 21 days. Or everybody on the planet got 21 days of extra background radiation added onto their life. Uh, this is the most idiotic, and I hate saying these words, moronic thing imaginable to say, but there it is, mm-hmm. in writing mm-hmm. and being puked up by the industry or the, the media out there. So, well, uh, I, I thank so, you. I got the article on uh, Pokemon. Yeah. Well, t- what, yeah. The, what the hell... Is this whoever made Pokemon? What are they doing, overlaying their game with any of the with either Fukushima plant? What are they doing? What, well, that's because they, they let so many. Because um, wherever cell phone is too, see, wherever cell phone ratings is too. But uh, it's because they let so many or forced so many refugees to go back. They're actually giving loans there in the communities now. They want people to come back to the community and use the banks to hang out socially. But they'll also give them loans to do stuff. It's just Jeez. it's about the Olympics, eh? It's about a handful of people making a well, fortune. Well, don't off. forget, yeah, as true. bad as Brazil is with Zika and the worries about that, you got the Tokyo Radioactive Olympics coming up. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's the stupidest thing imaginable. They're giving an out there, uh, you know, a number of months back. Where a diplomat from Sweden, a Japanese diplomat, had spoken out and begged Japan to, mm-hmm. to allow somebody else to do it while they're still trying to build the facilities, mm-hmm. and got no reply, of course. And Japan is in free fall right now. Anyway, it's done. Japan's dying. Uh, yeah, it's done. Clearly, I I don't understand. But I feel sorry for the people there. Of course, Tokyo, a city of 30 million people, that should have been evacuated, should still be evacuated, but they're not going to. They just let them deal with it. Some will live, some will die. So it called acceptable losses, I guess. They want to whittle, like you say, they want the population down to nothing. The robotic industry, the artificial oh, organ industry is all coming. The real technology is just around the corner, and they want to get rid of it's the population. It's going to sweep in here like a tornado. And, and yeah, they want to dummy us down, at least. And yeah, So the oxygen levels and the ice on the planet has been brutalized over five lousy years the Pacific Ocean has heated up and created super storms, supercell cyclones and supercell typhoons and supercell hurricanes that are unimaginable they are so it's, big, you know, what was that one uh, typhoon it was 100 miles across or something I don't know, right, the one in the Philippines was 100 mile 
at 200, 225 mile per hour oh. winds. This is like a tornado in comparison to yeah. it, and that's only a quarter mile wide at a super one. Incredible. Last six minutes. This thing lasted, took out 41 provinces, went on to across the ocean and over to Vietnam and still kept going, but not at those speeds, but it still was 150 miles an hour over there. And so 100, if 200, 225 mile an hour winds come in and bang into the Florida or California or something like that, uh-huh. it's, it's over. And so, and so this happened five times. In the last couple of years, right, it's going to happen soon to some big city. No, you're and right. It's you're totally time. right. We're well, still trying to get to, still trying to get Yoshi. I don't think we're going to do it. We're we're trying, but uh, I wanted to ask him specifically about the heat, the incredible heat that much of the uh, northern hemisphere is being subjected to. Warmest in history in the Middle East. Uh, American records are falling uh, every day. Uh, there's a huge what they call a heat dome over the center of North America. And we're way over normal here. Have been since June the first. It's nothing. It's nothing new, really. We had 104, 106 degrees in, in early June. So it's too much. What are you up there? 85, something like that. Yeah, it's back and forth. It's, right now. It's up. Uh, I'm not even sure because we do stupid metric. And no, still, right. I grew. I grew up with standard, and then they switched along the way to metric, and I hated it ever since, and rebelled against it. But uh, yeah, no, it's stupid and hot. Uh, for us, and everything is dry out. There's no moisture in the morning. Friends of mine who have greenhouses and stuff like this have to go water all the time, all night long water, and get up in the morning after being off for a couple of hours, and it's still dry there. Huh. And there's no moisture on anything. There really is not. There's something really? else. So your, yeah, your ground, entire climate baseline has been switched to a semi-arid rather than a, a continual base of moisture. You're all dry the milk now. Glaciers are gone. Yeah. Yeah, and you're going to have fires. Moisture. Yeah, this is all going to end up with big fires. At some point. Endless fires. Well, we're killing off, like we see with Chernobyl, we killed off the microscopic world in the forest and the bacteria in the forest. So the forest didn't decay, and so fires were just brutal fires, and that's what we're seeing. At any given time, we got around eighty massive, bigger, as big as Fort, Fort McMurray for forest fires going on right now. We can't keep up with it. And uh, never seen anything like that. Is there any indication, Dana, that uh, we've lost the insects? But the insects, yeah. of course, are dependent upon, in many cases, uh, microscopic flora and fauna, which Great. decay things. Have you been able to come up with anything about the loss of a, any kind of a, a base count or a bedrock of microscopic life that's gone? That has to be involved, but yeah, no, one's no, looked, no one's looked at it yet. And, uh, like... Yeah, the birds were dependent upon all those insects too, right? And so that's absolutely a, that's the big indicator. All the birds are gone, and all the little. So uh, well, my point is, it's just not the insects didn't just pick up, pack up, and leave and take no. that food chain link. What oh, was no. below them, smaller yeah. than them, had to go too. That's right. my view. And, and like the forest that I uh, I had done two years ago, the coastline uh, forest where I went into communities. Yeah. These places were say. You, you know, you're, you you had to clean your windshield at the other side when you drove through. You had to. Sure. The whole front of your car and your windshield was just disgusting, like revolting. Your windshield wipers couldn't keep it clean no matter what, how good your vehicle is. And uh, to see no insects on those windows and see no insects on the side of the road, I mean, that was holy stuff for me. That was wow. And and that was uh, in tropical rainforest, and that's a spot uh, old growth. That's Cathedral Grove, that whole area. And these trees, some of these trees are thirty feet wide, and this has never been harvested. It's about forty miles from one end to the other end, and so that's the perfect paradise for insects. An incredible, like used to be a nightmare. I, I, I've done these places many times before sure. Fukushima happened, and never seen anything like it. And I, and I spent two days looking at that going right down that pad on the insects and after that I was hooked on trying to answer that question you know and it's just everybody all right we we uh apparently have Yoshi online okay. let's see uh, so- yeah you there Yoshi well I hope you can hear me this has been really a uh, super hassle getting your national line hello Dana good to hear your voice again I've been traveling you a too, lot, Yoshi. So unfortunately not on the show yeah, yeah, we we got you. Um, we got you. All right, the floor is yours. Yeah. We'll go about uh, seven or eight minutes oh, yeah, here. Just and... a few things about uh, 
Tim Kaine and nuclear, it was really see, uh, good to see the Republican Party. Some of the activists there take the nuclear issue seriously. First time I've seen it. And yeah. criticize Tim yeah. Kaine. Yeah. yeah, that's a huge breakthrough, you know, because Sanders, Bernie Sanders had criticized the situation. And the points of some Trump supporters are finally on to the nuclear issue. So there's some a bit of hope there and they point out tim kane uh is an advocate of nuclear energy you know virginia's got dominion yeah. power yeah. a nuclear reactor in surrey virginia and also it's the center of the largest concentration of nuclear warships submarines and cruisers carriers and all that uh that's at newport news you know norfolk you know the, there's mm-hmm. a bunch of uh, naval shipyards and naval ports on the virginia coast and one of the interesting things i found out about uh tim kane uh he's advocating this because there's been a major shift in virginia dominion power uh they were going to buy these mitsubishi heavy water reactor uh yeah, the you know, pressurized water reactors but they switched to the hitachi ge boiling water reactor basically the same design in fukushima who did so, who switched uh, Tim K- uh D- dominion power and they, they're uh, actually they still the making hitachi. these reactors now oh sure yeah yeah sure sure they're, they call they're garbage them advanced boiling waters but oh, they're basically great. the same design so yeah, it's they, a bwr so mark ii came, now or something all right yeah, yeah. So basically, Kane is on the Hitachi payroll. He's another Fukushima guy, you know. So this is just, you know, it, it's happening all over in England and, you know, uh, you know, all over the world. So unsurprising, Hillary's vice presidential choice has been bought by Hitachi GE, the, the, the guys who uh, destroyed Fukushima and is polluting the world. So here we go again, you know, is, is they seem to have unlimited amounts of money. Both co- companies say they're broke, but they have no shortage of money to buy politicians everywhere. And now they got the Democratic uh, Party's vice presidential nominee in their pocket. You know, so this is, anyway, it was really good to see at least the Republicans start to take this issue on, to see the seriousness of what we're talking about, you know. All these trade deals are awful things, you know, and uh, if we have these trade deals go through, you're going to see a lot more of these crappy nuclear power plants coming into service all across the United States, too. You know, they're discounting. They're so desperate to get rid of nuclear fuel, you know, they're they're discounting the power plants. So, anyway, bad news there, you know, bad uh, bad news everywhere. I was just down in Southeast Asia. Uh Uh-huh. Are you still there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're here. Uh, Malaysia. Yeah, yeah, uh, people living in Penang say it's highly radioactive. Well, that makes a lot of sense because they get crosswinds from the Pacific and from the Indian Ocean. We have all the beach kills in Vietnam. You have all the fish dying, you know, similar to what's happening on the West Coast of America. And then I was down in Singapore. I was, I was uh, visiting an old friend of mine, you know. Uh, he lives on about the eighth floor of a luxury apartment uh-huh. uh, tower in the nicest part of Singapore, one of the more expensive places. In those 0.20 microsieverts on his sofa, you know, I just threw the dosimeter. He just, you know, was just joking. He says, well, you, do, do you think it's very accurate? And I just, you know, switched on the dosimeter, threw it on there. You know, it's massive. It doubled the Japanese limit, you know, in Singapore. 0.2. So, and, and it, yeah, and he was wondering why. I said, well, you're basically, you could see the fog outside your window. You know, you're basically nearly at cloud level. And so it's coming in the moisture, you know, all across the Pacific. So the whole Pacific is basically contaminated. At least well, most of the Pacific, northern Pacific is contaminated. And, uh, and I got to wonder about what's happening in Australia, too, you know. Gary Greenwood sent me a message about the barrier reef is about gone. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm just wondering if all the uranium mining down, here, down there, if someone's not dumping a lot of nuclear waste near the barrier reef. Oh, yeah, that's I, interesting. This industry is so... Yeah, this industry is so out of control. You know, they just, they're just so expedient. They just, they don't care. They just dump wherever they can, wherever they get away with it. And uh, they're not thinking of the consequences. And uh, and we need politicians like the vice president of the United States, the president of the United States, senators, to take this stuff seriously, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, we're having a heck of a time in Japan, obviously, with, uh, and that's something I'm researching now. I found out that uh, voting machines in Japan, uh, I, did, I didn't, did, I don't think I mentioned this to you. Well, on the paper ballots, there's a super hard paper 
the paper is so hard, it's like stone, okay? And they're making the voters uh, check off the ballots with pencils. In other words, you didn't raise this thing, there'd be no trace of this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so you know, we're, they're stealing, the nuclear industry is stealing the elections, okay? With, uh, all, through the most, you know, dubious, dodgy means. Uh, just insane. Uh, you're the only what one who's on, on top of this. Doing. Yeah, that's it. Wow. Well, I wish he, people pay attention, you know. I mean, the fact is that uh, Hitachi is coming to Virginia. That should be very, very alarming. You know, they're building a Fukushima uh-huh. right there in Surrey, right on the coast of Virginia. It should be alarming to people who live out. And anyone who's been out to Virginia knows it's a beautiful state, you know. Uh, it's a wonderful place, a lot of the historical heritage, great, you know, uh, pastures, forests, sure, and all that. of course. Uh, criminal. Just well, criminal I got the story here. I mean, uh, to Tim Kaine is supporting nuclear power as a solution to meeting Virginia's commitment to reduce its carbon footprint. So there yeah, you go. Yeah, so, so just look up Dominion Power and you will see right there they're switching to Itachi. You know, just the people who built uh, the reactors one and two. And in uh, reactor, you know, that and then, do these, down reactor I, four, they caught on I fire. assume these, these same designs still have the spent fuel pool five stories off the ground. Uh, yeah, I don't think those designs have radically changed. I'm not, you know, a nuclear engineer, but I don't think there's radical changes. And then they're basically, look, you know, when a meltdown happens, it just burns right through. There's no protection. I mean, it's even the best of designs of course. Yeah. Are, are just, are, you know, are totally vulnerable. Yeah. And Dana was able to come up with some information from a Forbes magazine article that it appears that for the first yeah. time there's been mentioned that Daini has been a total loss as yeah. well. They're talking about decommissioning that. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. That was, that, there were explosions there, you know, uh, that, you know, all the explosions went unreported, you know. There was explosions at two, one, the vast one at three. So, right. you know, he just sort of come dribbling out in these reports. Oh, by the way, there was an explosion in the reactor. Oh, my gosh. You know? So it was released in the atmosphere, and everything apparently burned right through, you know, right through the basement there right to the country and, and it went, that happened in just a matter of days by the way it didn't it happened quickly yeah yeah oh you know, yeah 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 it was happening like you know the, the meltdowns were happening within two hours of the tsunami they were starting right. up things were heating up and, and you then, know the people uh, there the knew it the next day explosions yoshi yeah, the thing, people yeah, there knew it and they never said anything yeah. nothing and most of them are well, dead that's now that's why they had to that's why they all ran all the workers ran out of fukushima one on march uh, 12, you know, less than 24 hours after the tsunami hit, and the Prime Minister had to order him to go back to work and keep the water running. Don't let the whole darn thing go up in smoke, you know? So you remember that, they, folks? They, just evacuate. they ran. Yeah. They actually ran. They, they ran to, uh, yeah, Fukushima number two. They got in their trucks and cars and yep. drove away. And they were ordered back by the Prime Minister. He said, you cannot do this, because if you do this, we're going to lose half of Japan, you know? Uh, you know, we've got to put the water on there. So that's how bad it was. And now, as Dana points out from the sports article, it was far worse than reported. And like I say, the only mention of this there are in some of these, you know, in the boiler paper reports that come out of, you know, out of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission there. You know, they're buried. The truth of the situation, how dire it was, it's just buried under, you know, a lot of verbiage. So. Right. Right. Uh, thank uh, anyone you. Anyone who trusts nuclear is an idiot. I oh mean, that's well, that's our. Is that's a total the, idiot. Or you're total corrupt. You're so corrupt is, you don't care. Hugs that is you. our. That is our ex. Hugs you. Execution. Thanks, Dana. You take care. Yeah. You too, folks. Yeah. Okay. Take it easy, Dana. I hope I, was, I, I hope I hear you next time. Just terrible. Yeah, you too. Yeah. You too. Awesome. Good night, folks. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Yoshi, thank you for the article. On I've got it up All there. Right. It's an essay on uh, Turkey. Oh. Yeah, uh, man, yeah, what a yeah. what a scene! You know, no one's talking yeah, I, about. I had, to, I had to do that because everyone is not getting it right. You know of what's no. going on that Obama no. and uh, Erdogan they're in colludes. They're in collusion right from the beginning, from uh, 2009, the first diplomatic tri- uh, trip abroad. Well, they've been shepherding and, and uh, funding terrorism. Now, here's the funny part: Turkey yeah. could mm-hmm. claim. Uh, over there's 50 to 60 American B-61 nukes or whatever they are. They've got the base. Mm-hmm. They could take those nukes and hold them as ransom to get Gulen or yeah. Julen out of the U.S. Yeah. That's, they might yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, they don't really want it. I mean, they're not going to do that. This is all like collusion. You know, there's not, there's nothing like that. There's no real tension. That's just a game. There was no real coup. They just basically no, no, had to take out all Absolutely. the... Absolutely. There's yeah. a fraud. They had to take out all the Navy and Army commanders on the GNC who were involved in the European uh, migrant, you know, crisis. The, the Turkish Navy and the CIA, George Soros, and the Clinton Foundation organized those half million migrants across. And now that, you know, European airports are being blown up and people are getting massacred across Europe, now they have to cover their tracks, you know, before Obama yeah. goes out of office. Okay. You know, they don't want Trump to come in with all the files intact well, of what really happened and why you... Europe is being destroyed. Look at my headlines. Uh, you haven't seen the big story yeah. today. Huma Abedin, uh, Hillary's top advisor, in those uh, dumped emails, in one email said yeah. that Hillary is uh, mentally not there. Uh, and she needs to be That's watched right. all the time. So you read yeah, that yeah, and you yeah. so get it. Oh, pathological. Yeah. We, yep. can't, we can't let these people run what's left of the nuclear industry. No yeah. way. We cannot no way. let them do that. Okay, Yoshi. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you All right. for trying so okay. hard to get through. Yeah, thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Okay. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. All right, we got to wrap it up and say a quick good night. Thank you for being here. We'll be right back with you tomorrow night with more analysis. And I hope you have a good day. It is really crazy out there. Be careful. <laughs>